Hey everyone, this week's episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Honey and by Audible. We'll get to them soon, but first, oh, weird news. Over the past year or so, uh, Bigfoot has appeared on the show twice. Mm -hmm. The first time was when it came out that U.S. congressional candidate and now congressman, he's a winner, Denver Riggleman, uh, was a huge fan of Bigfoot and had posted pictures to social media hinting at a more erotic, well-hung side of Sasquatch rarely seen. He was brave enough to do it. Yeah, and it was a winning... Uh, Platform. Yeah, you you can do that, and you can you can walk the halls of Congress. The second time was when it came out that Matthew Whitaker, who was briefly in charge of the entire U.S. Justice Department after Jeff Sessions got the boot, also had a bit of a Bigfoot past in the form of some very strange plush dolls that he sold while sitting on the board of World Patent Marketing, a company that was also working on creating a toilet for dudes with long dicks before they got shut down by the FTC for being a giant scam that stole a bunch of people's life savings. Mm -hmm. Now we'll never get the big dick toilet. Yeah. Well, now to complete the terrible trifecta of news involving both Bigfoot and the federal government, this week the FBI, for some reason, unsealed a bunch of old documents from 1976 showing that at one point they did, in fact, devote time and resources to investigating the existence of Sasquatch, which now sounds like a uh, giant waste of time that no serious government agency would ever commit to, but with the death of J. Edgar Hoover and the end of uh, COINTELPRO, the FBI had a bit of extra time on its hands, you know, in the mid-70s. It was the 70s after Ooh. all. And uh, this was because they weren't harassing, un uh, undermining, and straight up murdering activists. So... Frees up a lot of time not trying to get Martin Luther King Jr. to kill himself. Yeah. So they moved on. And Sasquatch it was. Yeah. We're a fun FBI now. In, the, in August of 1976, just after America's 200-year anniversary, Peter C. Byrne of the Bigfoot Information Center sent a letter to the FBI requesting some clarification. He had read or heard somewhere that the FBI had indeed examined supposed Sasquatch hares at some point and officially concluded that the hares did not match any known species of animal. And since this was pre-internet, he had no way of verifying if this was true. Well, so he wrote a letter to the FBI, because that's how that's how it worked back then. Damn it, I'm going to write a letter. Yeah. About two weeks later, Jay Cochran, assistant director of the FBI's laboratory division, wrote back to Byrne, saying that the FBI had actually been receiving lots of similar requests for the past year, most likely stemming from a book published in 1975, The Washington Environmental Atlas, a book published by the Army Corps of Engineers primarily devoted to the very real flora and fauna of Washington State, but also featuring a very small section on the state's Bigfoot phenomenon, featuring the claim about the FBI supposedly having tested Sasquatch hair. Hmm. A Cochran said that they had looked, and they couldn't find any records that this has actually happened. So, so there's your answer, buddy. Well, around two months later, Byrne wrote back to Cochran basically asking that, hey, since you guys haven't actually tested any Sasquatch hair samples, I've got some you might want to take a look at. 15 hairs attached to a tiny piece of skin that we at the Bigfoot Information Center have thus far been unable to identify. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, sure enough, a month later, Jay Cochran, the second in charge at the FBI's forensics department, got back to Byrne and told him to send those hairs right on over. Quote, the FBI laboratory conducts examinations primarily of physical evidence for law enforcement agencies in connection with criminal investigations. Occasionally, on a case-by-case -case basis, in the interest of research and scientific inquiry, we make exceptions to this general policy. With this understanding, we will examine the hairs and tissue mentioned in your letter. Well, there's a little fun clause here at the FBI. Yeah, sure, why not? If it sounds like it'll be fun, and it doesn't fall under our normal jurisdiction, we'll just fucking do it. Yeah, why not? Well, what follows is a series of official internal FBI memos that are just officially approving the lab work and justifying why they're doing so. It's signed off on by multiple people in the chain of command. And it's all written as if this is just a totally normal thing. Yeah. Uh, and then in March of 1977, the lab results came in, and uh, yeah, that was deer hair. Oh, or at least that's what the FBI wants you to think. Of course, who could trust them? The fact that the FBI is debunking this makes me believe that that's it might true. have been Sasquatch even more than before. Mm -hmm. And then they launched a huge cover-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Sasquatch, he actually committed suicide. Mm -hmm. He shot himself twice in the back of the head. Yeah, it was really weird. You should have seen his <laughs> arms. The way they worked was mystifying. It does seem a bit odd that a Bigfoot research group based in Washington State would have been unable to tell what deer hair looks like under a microscope, but I, hey, sometimes you just really want some things to be true. Uh, but yeah, in conclusion, the Federal Bureau of Investigation once sent supposed Sasquatch hair and skin to their crime lab to be officially investigated. Yeah. 
Uh, weirdly enough, though, their letter to Peter C. Byrne letting him know their results either never got sent or got lost in the mail. So now at 93 years old, Byrne is finally learning the truth. And uh, he told the Washington Post this. We're just finding this out. It's disappointing. Again, this is like the old person that had his medals taken away. Why you got to tell this guy right at the end of his fucking yeah. life? Well, I've lived a long life. You know, dedicated it lots to of research. unanswered questions. I guess we'll never know if that hair was Sasquatch hair or not. Listen, <laughs> it's not, I, I'm not trying to like wish any ill will on this guy, but realistically, he's not going to be around much longer. Yeah. And as sad as that is to say, people should have just let him die with knowing that this was an open case, that it was, it could have potentially been true that Sasquatch existed and that the FBI had confirmed it but refused to tell him because then he would know too much. Maybe their official policy was they're like, hey, this guy's harmless. He's having fun. Let's not burst his bubble. Mm -hmm. If we tell him that it's not Sasquatch hair, he's going to have a fucking breakdown. So let's wait till he's dead. And they just assume they're like, it's been fucking 50 years. Yeah. Release the memos. Who cares? This guy died a long time ago. Uh, actually, he's alive and well. Oh, no. At 93 years old. Well, that's the thing is because if you don't get confirmation, it's just like when we ask about, uh, and reporting tells us the, about the Wall case, the Jacob Wall case. Yeah. It's like we can't, we're not talking about any open or closed investigation. So if this guy assumed uh, that the case like, was Maybe open, they're still testing it. Yeah, like science has come a long way and maybe the laboratory just wasn't as prepared back then to identify this yeah. hair. But one day they're going to be able to do it. And if I die without them saying anything, it'll be on the next generation of Bigfoot hunters to finally confirm that this was Sasquatch hair. And instead, yeah. he just gets to die sad. Yeah. Which is yeah. a bummer. Keep an eye on this guy. Yeah. You've, really, uh, you've really done a mean thing to, he, a, to an innocent old man here, he FBI. Died of a broken heart. <laughs> Killed by the FBI. Killed by the government. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, moving on now, as we've seen repeatedly during the course of this show, time is a flat circle. Just like Earth. Yeah. <laughs> time is a flat circle, and any bizarre, stupid, or disgusting thing that happens will certainly happen again in almost the exact same way, somewhere else, with very little delay. If there's one fake doctor out there, there's hundreds of fake doctors out there. And similarly, just months after we covered the saga of hard rock musician Jared Threaten, the exact same fake it till you make it grift has been uncovered over in the world of hip hop. So if you don't recall our coverage of Jared Threaten from back in November of last year, basically he's a musician who at the start of his first big European tour was found to have personally faked every last bit of his perceived success through fake followers on multiple social media sites, fake Spotify plays, fake reviews, fake publications to publish those reviews, a fake record label, a fake producer, a fake manager, a fake promoter, and fake concert footage. Fake ticket sales is finally what did him, and you had to come to reality at some point, yeah. and uh, all right, you got me. Mm -hmm. It was pretty obvious, uh, or it should have been pretty obvious to anyone standing nearby or him himself, that if literally no one from your supposedly huge and devoted fan base actually shows up to the show, people, they're going to start asking questions. Yeah. Like, what's the deal? This guy's huge. Why is no one showing up? Has he, is he, I know. Did time, he get me too and we didn't my, hear about my, it? Time moves so fast these days that, you know, people can't even hold their attention to one band. And he's just, he's a perfect example of our society not being able to concentrate on what they truly love yeah. and being fickle. They're fickle fans. Oh, it just turns out he's a liar. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, we hadn't checked in on Jared Threaten in a while. So I did. And uh, he's apparently still at it. Yeah. His, uh, his old bandmates who were not in on the grift and were understandably uh, embarrassed to be associated with it, they left the group not long after everything came out. But as of last month, Jared Threaten was actively recruiting new band members for a do-over of that failed European tour set to take place exactly one year later this November mm -hmm. at the same venue. And they haven't clarified if this is real or not. So I think no. he might just be saying this. Maybe start out at a local venue. Just go down to, like, I don't know, the Troubadour or... So here's the thing. When you're in the, the knitting factory. The metal scene in America, everyone knows, it's, like, the weakest metal scene in the world. Mm -hmm. You gotta go to Europe if you yeah. really want to make a splash. And I know that's gonna piss off a lot of metalheads here who love going to shows that are constantly packed, but... It's true. It's a different scenario ask, when you're over there. Ask any fucking hard rock or metal band. They always say that Europe and Japan are the best places to go for, like, metal fans. Yeah. They're the craziest. Mm -hmm. Anyways... 
As for those former Threaten bandmates, uh, they apparently successfully sued Jared Threaten for the out-of-pocket expenses that they had paid for travel and equipment for that bullshit tour. But neither Threaten nor his wife actually showed up in court to defend themselves despite personally being served a summons. And it doesn't look like anyone's getting their money back anytime soon. So, Well, as we've learned through po- recent politics, if you're summoned to court, you just gotta, you just ignore it. It's fine. Yeah. It's just fine to Throw it in the bathtub with yeah. all the other mail. Now, with that out of the way, though, a very threatened esque thing is happening recently in the East Coast hip-hop world, courtesy of Baltimore rapper Chad Focus, real name Chad Arrington. So over the last two years, Chad Focus's career has really taken off, as evidenced by the hundreds of thousands and even sometimes millions of views and listens that his tracks have gotten on YouTube and SoundCloud. Over on his Instagram page, which uh, has over 180,000 followers, Chad Focus's success is fully on display, and he's had dozens of billboards advertising his music, including some in Times Square. Wow, he's killing it. But of course, you know where this is going. It's all bullshit. He bought all those views and listens and followers and paid for those billboards to go up to increase his perceived success. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, it is true. You fake it till you make it, but you don't do it like this. But in the social media generation, yeah. there's something to be said about grifting people by having a big following that doesn't actually exist. Aren't we all grifting a little bit each day? Yeah. Anyway, unlike Jared Threaten, who spent stupid amounts of his own money faking his success, Chad Focus allegedly funded his career by stealing $4.1 million from his employer. Smart. <laughs> And that employer is not named in any of the legal documents, probably because they're deeply ashamed. Yeah. But Chad Focus's job there was as a search engine optimization specialist, which is already a great skill set to have if you're trying to game your way into viral fame. And also a great job to have at a company that has no idea what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Well, let me go contabulate those, uh, those views. Uh, it happened at our old company, where they were grifted for a lot of money by some people who... There was a guy it, on the right? ETC team who I never met who only communicated through email. He was living off-site, probably on like a fucking yacht somewhere, who just like, he was optimizing. He didn't do fucking anything. Oh, I was talking about actual employees in the building that oh. got away with uh, a lot of money by just complete ignorance from the managerial staff. Yeah, I mean, if you're a, if you're a liar and you have no shame about it, go work at a startup. Yeah. They'll believe anything you say. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Back to Chad Focus. As part of his job there, he was given a company credit card with an apparently very high limit that no one was paying very close attention to, and he used that card to just go fucking wild. He charged $4.1 million for music and music video production, fake followers, views, listens, as well as those billboards, and then sound and video equipment, and of course jewelry to complete the ensemble. Because if you're a big, rich rapper and you're not wearing any jewels, yeah. Something's up. So that's the other thing, too, is that it's... Uh, this, and he's a bad person. This is this is not... It's teetering on the edge of the crime. I don't know. Time. Seems like a victimless crime to me. Uh, that, that, but that's what I'm saying, though, is what he bought on the company credit card, based on his job title, mm-hmm. would be things, at least most of them, that would make sense for what he was doing for the company. Yeah. Because I it's mean, marketing. We, we haven't heard from Chad Focus yet. He hasn't taken the stand. But I'm thinking, like, maybe his plan with it, he's like... He's like, basically, I'm treating this as a uh, non-consensual investment. Yeah. And, you know, once I fucking make it, obviously, pay it back. they'll get it back with interest. Yeah. And everyone's happy. Well, I hope he used all of the rewards miles that he was able to churn out from that credit card, because that's... That's the thing. You when can fly around the goddamn when world When you're spending on millions on a fucking credit card, assuming he got the right card... Yeah. He can really, he can really churn. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there was uh, very little regard for flying under the radar with all of this. Uh, Chad Focus even spent $100,000 on hats with the word Focus on them, despite the fact that you can just go down to the Ford factory and pick one up. (laughs) It's weird because why the hell would you waste your money on merch when you know that you don't have a fan base that's going (laughs) to buy it? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. So uh, other examples of expenses include $125,000 for tickets to his own concerts, uh, $300,000 on the website Fiverr, so apparently... Uh, to uh, Fiverr users whose services were basically boosting his profile and influence, basically doing his job for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's actually a good grift. Yeah. You get a job as a marketing or SEO person, and then you pay some like person in college who just wants to make some extra money to do your job for you at I, a fraction of the price. I've, uh, this actually happens. I, I've, uh, my wife works in animation, and I, I, I don't even know who the person was, so I'm not doxing anyone here. Yeah. But there was... She did work on a show where one person uh, was essentially farming out their own 
uh, work, work yeah. to people in other countries for way cheaper and then just pocketing the difference. Ho! Oh. Yeah. Now, as for much, how much it costs to inflate your social media clout, the indictment says that Chad Focus spent $1,119 per 100,000 YouTube views, $1,999 per 250,000 Spotify plays, and $1,499 per 15,000 Instagram followers. And with $4.1 million, you can... Sky's the limit, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so. he very conspicuously did not spend shit on his Twitter account, which has just around 4,000 followers. So all, it's all bots there anyway. It probably is. Uh, he did, however, spend an unknown amount of money on this terrible animated music video for his song, Get the Money. So appropriately named. And uh, yeah, this is clearly just like a bunch of stock flash animation that's been slightly altered to not be completely context-free. Yeah, it's a uh, template. There's like, there's a part of it where it says like, it's like sample text or like insert text here. I mean, it's kind of brilliant if he was actually going for it, but yeah. he wasn't. Anyways, as with any time something like this happens, the big question is how someone was able to get away with stealing that much money for that long. In this case, four years. And this is without anyone noticing. How could it happen? It also appears that uh, Chad Focus's employer and victim deserve some sympathy here. Mm -hmm. Chad did not act alone. He'd basically just use his company card to make seemingly legitimate purchases from seeming le seemingly legitimate companies run by friends of his, and then they'd send him the money right back after taking their cut. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so to further obscure things, he and his co-conspirators also forged credit card statements to make it seem like he wasn't spending that much. No big deal. Meanwhile, in addition to all the fraud, Chad Focus made a seemingly earnest attempt at getting into the YouTube gaming scene via several absolutely garbage review videos of various game consoles where he basically just lists off Wikipedia facts, including a review of the Xbox One posted in 2017, four years after the Xbox One's initial release. Yeah, these ones, I'm not sure like what he's trying, like... Are we <sighs> sure he's not the kid that reviewed Dead Cells? Going by a different name? Is he 100% is not. Okay. Unless that kid is uh, a master of disguise. No, he like, uh, yeah, all his, his gaming videos are the weirdest ones. Like, it's like 30 second intro video, literally like one minute list off like Wikipedia bullet points about the console, not reviewing it, just mm -hmm. stating like it has a disk drive. And then, and then like a two minute uh, outro of like, hey, check out my music video. So it sounds like he just wanted to like get on the algorithms for like whoever, whatever users YouTube has tagged as gamers. Yeah. So they'll somehow funnel into his his uh, music. Again, a decent grift because there's plenty of videos on YouTube that are just text and yeah. nothing else that have like 20 million views. Yeah. Click so. here to download the full movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, he was also involved in some unclear capacity with a company called Mobe. MOBE, which stands for My Online Business Education, which as of June 2018 was shut down by the FC FTC for being a huge fucking scam and pyramid scheme. Between music videos and console reviews, his YouTube channel is full of videos promoting MOBE, uh, so it seems like he wasn't at the bottom of that pyramid and was at least, you know, attempting to rip people off. Now, what can we say though? Chad Focus was hustling for that money one way or another. He, yeah. He was working for something. Yeah. But it was all illegal and uh, unethical. Hey. Um, but... Uh, the ends justify the means. Machiavelli. He was, per he was pursuing his goals by any means necessary. And you, you got to give him a little bit of credit for that, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, take two hip-hop artists. You've got the, the virgin hip-hop artist over here walking around like this. Mm-hmm. Not spending anything. And here comes Chad Focus. Spends millions of dollars of his employer's money secretly without their knowledge to promote his rap career. Yeah. Come on. The next grift needs to be him claiming that the company was like actually doing some really, really shady shit. I mean, they probably were. Yeah, that's the good like, If The good news the, is that like if the company was actually evil, then yeah. like Chad Focus is a hero. That's the thing. Like the kind of company where you're able to steal that much money from them is either... Horrible. Horribly incompetent, or is up to enough other shady shit that they don't that, want anyone looking into their books. Yeah. So he was actually like a accidentally money laundering for them. Chad Focus, so he could turn state's witness if that's the case, but then that would make him a snitch, which is bad for a rap career. Yes. But I mean, going to prison is good. I think he can talk about like in ten years or whatever when he gets out, he can uh, talk about how all that time he spent in jail while he's in jail. Not sure how it's going to go over with other prisoners. Like, what are you in for? Uh, I spent a bunch of money on, like, billboards for my fake rap career. No, I ripped off the man. 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's I all mean, about how you frame it. Anyone who's ever secretly stolen millions of dollars, they eventually get found out as soon as a routine audit happens. So it's, it's unclear what his exit strategy was here. Maybe uh, yeah, turn that fake fame into real fame quick enough that he can afford to somehow avoid multiple counts of wire fraud. Mm-hmm. I like I like the idea of the non-consensual uh, loan. No, I, what if uh, if it were me, it would be churning that credit card out and yeah. then taking the the miles redemptions or whatever redemptions from it and flying somewhere and going off the radar, because spending four million dollars on a credit card can easily get you yeah. a new life. I guess. Yeah. But he never never made it that far. Anyway, yeah, uh, he's facing up to eight years in prison now for wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and also aggravated identity theft because he forged his boss's signature a bunch of times. On the upside, though, he did manage to get featured on The Breakfast Club, which is huge for up-and-coming rappers. Unfortunately, though, it was as their donkey of the day, generally seen as a negative thing. Remember when we got in a feud with him? Because we were like, your videos are getting stolen. And he's like, nah, no one would do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Charlemagne. Charlemagne, yeah. I, he's not. No, I have nothing wrong with him. It was just like, you realize that people are taking everything that you're doing and re-uploading it. Oh, yeah, no, that, okay, so what happened is they, they did a piece on Malachi Love Robinson. He was their donkey of the day. Someone with a YouTube channel name called The Breakfast Club, like Breakfast Club official, uploaded that to YouTube, used our Malachi Love Robinson thumbnail on it. And we called him out. And then for we doing were like, that. "What the fuck, Breakfast Club?" And he's like, "That's we not our post shit." post on YouTube, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, well, you should probably like get someone to take this down because they're posting all of the stuff that you're getting paid yeah. to do for free on YouTube." And he was like, "He was basically, there's like, no money on YouTube." Yeah. <laughs> we're like, Charlemagne, Charlemagne, please, you're missing out on potentially tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars." Yeah, should have pushed it further and become consultants for Charlemagne the God. We just don't think that far enough ahead. Mm-hmm. We're too busy. All about getting, ideas. Yeah, we're all about like just uh, like writing wrongs and not yeah. about the how you could be monetarily compensated My work for writing here is done. for writing those. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man. <laughs> oh, uh, anyways, before we get to headlines, it's time for a quick word from this week's sponsors, starting with Honey. Mm. Yeah. The reality is, if you're shopping online and you're not shopping around, you're probably not saving money. So, what if there was a way for someone else to do that for you? Well, that's what Honey does. Honey is a free tool that you download to your computer's browser. While you shop online, Honey scans the internet for coupon codes and other discounts, then it automatically applies the coupon with the biggest saving to your cart at checkout. I literally just used this last night. I ordered some cookware from Sur Le Tab, <laughs> and I saved like 20 bucks. Yeah. I use it all the time, and if it doesn't work, it gives you the little, uh, a, a basically a honey fund that you yeah. can eventually use for gift cards. It works on over 20,000 sites like Amazon, Best Buy, Nordstrom, Target, Macy's, and more, and it installs to your browser in just two clicks. And instead of uh, taking our word for it, here's what actual honey users have to say. I totally thought honey was a scam, <laughs> but I just got $300 worth of bathing suits for $180. I hope those are really expensive bathing suits and not just like 50 bathing suits. <laughs> yeah, I just piss and shit in these things. I need a lot of them. They they give me the airflow that I need for my undercarriage. Well, regardless, they <laughs> saved money by no. switching to honey. Whatever you're doing in your yeah. trunks, that's up to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to not use honey. It's free to use and easy to install on your computer in just two clicks. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird. Honey, the smart shopping assistant that saves you money on 300 bathing suits. Or two bathing, two really good bathing suits. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, this episode is also sponsored by Audible. Listening makes us smarter, more connected people. It makes us better partners, parents, and leaders. And there's no better place to start listening than Audible. Audible is where so many inspiring voices and compelling stories open up listeners to new experiences and ways of thinking. And Audible members now get more than ever before. Members choose three titles every month. One audiobook plus two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. Members also have unlimited access to more than 100 audio-guided fitness and meditation programs. Get in shape. It's summertime. Yeah. Audible delivers bestsellers, business, self-improvement, memoirs, and more, all professionally narrated by actors, authors, and motivational superstars like Rachel Hollins, David Goggins, and Mel Robbins. I want to hear one from Walter Goggins. (laughs) He 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 might have a show on there. Audible members can also get free access to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post delivered daily to the Audible app. 
With the convenient app, members can access Audible anytime, at the gym, while commuting, on the go, and on any device. It will always pick up right where they left off. Audible also offers free and easy audiobook exchanges, credits you can roll over for a year, and a library you keep forever, even if you cancel. Yeah. Explore all the ways listening on Audible can improve mind, body, and soul with entertainment, information, and inspiration. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals, they're free. Visit audible.com slash weeklyweird, all one word, or text weeklyweird to 500-500 and uh, you can get that. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I did the audiobook of uh, Bruce Springsteen's autobiography narrated by Bruce Springsteen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like... I'm not an ASMR guy, but it's the closest thing to ASMR I've ever experienced. The yeah. man's got a great voice. If you like, if, if you like ASMR, but you don't like reading books, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, get a 30-day trial uh, with your first audiobook and two aud Audible originals for free by visiting our link, audible.com slash weeklyweird, or by texting weeklyweird, all one word, to 500-500. 500-500. Now, it, it'll be in the Yeah, page. yeah. Headlines time. Now time for headlines. Man takes first ever photo of living Colombian weasel after finding it standing on his toilet. It's like, always the last place you look. Yeah, that other guy, Mr. Byrne, went looking for Bigfoot for his whole fucking life, came up with nothing. This guy goes to his bathroom in the middle of the night, discovers an animal that has literally never been photographed alive. It's hilarious. Like, this is the one image of this weasel that scientists have, and it's just on this guy's toilet. Like, well, what, what happened after? Did it leave? Yeah, it ran away. He so, didn't know. He didn't think anything of it. He's like, ah, oh, just uh, it's just some rodent. Yeah. And he like. He's like, this is crazy. I'll take a picture. Yeah. He uses toilet. like this app. There's this like app for nature lovers where you can upload pictures of like animals and plants you find on hikes and stuff, and like other people will identify it mm -hmm. and it creates this database. So he uploaded his on there, and uh, someone was smart enough to be like, hmm, not exactly sure what this is. Let me look yeah. into it. And it turns out it's like this extremely rare South American weasel that. They've only ever found like bo dead bodies of it. Hmm. So well, that's cool. Yeah. Did it happen in Colombia too? Colombia. Yeah. yeah. All right. Doctors had to put out a fire in patient's chest during open heart surgery. <sighs> yeah. Burning love. That's a complication. Yeah, you don't want to hear about. It. Yeah. See, the, the the way this happened is it's just it is just complication after complication. They they had to open him up to do some heart surgery. In the process of like opening up his sternum. Uh, they realized, like, one of his lungs had some weird, like, condition to it, so it was stuck to the sternum. Mm. So they had to, like, kind of try to peel it off, and in doing that, they accidentally punctured his lung. And so then they're like, well, we have to, like, turn up the oxygen levels in our uh, respirator on him to 100% pure oxygen. Oof. But when they did that, they forgot that their, like, uh, cauterizing tool was, like, just sitting right there. And so, you know... They're lucky they didn't explode. It, I mean, it did. It was like... Poof, yeah. And they, you know, within seconds, they turned the oxygen levels back to normal. And had a good laugh. I thought you were going to say poured a glass of water into his chest. <laughs> <laughs> when you did that motion, I was like, no, they didn't. No, they didn't do that. Please don't tell me they did that. That would have been funny. Like, oh, geez, now he's full of water. Get the pumps. Oh, God. Now he electrocuted the inside of this man's chest. No, it's, it, then it sounds like everything was fine after that. They, you know... That was crazy. Yeah. You're not, <laughs> sir, wake up. You're not going to believe what happened. <laughs> oh, I do believe it, and I am furious. Yeah. Just like your last patient, Greg, the guy with the leg for an arm and an arm for a leg. Yeah. It's a fun hospital. It is. Man has erection for nine days after moped injury. Uh... I'm, uh, so uh, this is new, so I'm assuming that he had consulted a doctor after four he hours. Did. He did. Well, after like a day or so. That's dangerous. He, uh, his gooch, his, his grundle got like banged into that seat and it, it fucked up the, the blood vessels running along it. So they were pumping like full, full blood circulation 24 seven, I'm, making him rock hard. They I'm, said it was a stage four erection. I would venture to assume that he tried to cure himself by masturbating a few times before oh, going to the sure. hospital. Oh, for sure. Because... That might have been what I would do. Yeah. And then you're like, wow, this hurts even more now. Yeah. It's a, why am I jizzing blood? This is oh, bad. God. Yeah, then he just tucked it up into his belt loop and went yeah. walking into the hospital. Yeah. As you do. Yeah. What seems to be the problem, sir? <laughs> 
funny joke. Now, we all love that <laughs> joke. Now, what's the problem? It won't go away. It's stuck. All right. Has it been this more than a curse. Already? Yes, I don't know. They ended up like finding a way to drain yeah, the drain. blood or something. Yeah. It's, yeah, it sucks. It's yeah. not. It's not a fun injury. No, I mean, it is for like a couple minutes probably. But yeah, I doubt that the first couple minutes were painless, considering he smashed his gooch. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Philippines President Duterte tells crowd he used to be gay before he cured himself by dating his first wife. The man's wild. He was just waiting for the the right woman to come along. But he. So at this point, he's admitted that he's bisexual then. No, I don't know. He, this is a whole thing because, like, he's he's up for re-election again. So he's pandering? Uh, well, no. He His whole line of attack against one of his uh, opponents is calling the other guy gay. <laughs> and, like, making fun of him. He's like, this is queer over here. And he, uh, it, in part of one of the insults, he's like, yeah, I used to be like him. And then I actually went on a date with a lady. Am I right? It's a weird insult. The crowd was like, woo! Yeah, woo, I think. Wait, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're saying woo because there's guns pointed at them? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he's, he's wildly popular. He'll probably win again. Yeah. God, God bless the Philippines. <laughs> Keep uh, at it. Slipknot singer Corey Taylor claims he blew out left testicle singing high notes. I don't, friend that, of the show, Corey Taylor. Yeah, I, think I know. I think he... He, he's a joy on the on online. And, yeah, uh, he's fantastic. Yeah, I think he was probably lying. Well, yeah, he like refu- he, I believe he refuted it on Twitter. I didn't follow it that closely because he was he basically like called people out for reporting it. And yeah, I didn't look into like, it. Like, wow, you guys really that. take this seriously. But I do want to say thank you. He did. Uh, he uh, gave a little congrats on the uh, Twitter for when I got married. Oh, cool. I thought that was very cool. Yeah, he's uh, he's great. Yeah, we should get him on again sometime. That would be great. He would be. Uh, that it, it was so crazy because he's like. He kind of knew whenever he opens his mouth that it, it becomes a headline. Yeah. And I remember when, like, so, like I forget which uh, metal uh, online tabloid or whatever picked it up. He was like, we did it. We, yeah. made, a, we made another headline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but that's, what does uh, Corey Taylor think? Yeah. Well, it's uh, that's in the uh, machinima garbage now. That's, it is. Uh, podcast, it's so it's gone. Gone. Anyway, Charmin created a toilet paper roll for millennials that out- lasts up to three months. It's and it's literally, it's one of those toilet paper rolls from, like, the airport bathroom that is <laughs> it's like the size of a car tire. Where the fuck are you supposed to put that in your tiny 200-square-foot apartment? You got to get one of those toilet paper stands that's, like, freestanding. Can't be on the wall. What? But, I still yeah. am confused. Well, they're like, if you put it all on one roll, it takes up way less space than the same amount of uh, uh, squares in multiple rolls. So they're like, yeah, millennials, now you can just... This cheese wheel of toilet paper. Does this really exist? Can you buy it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's called the Forever Roll. It doesn't last forever, though. It only lasts like a month. Yeah. I, I do hate their commercials where the bears are just, like, getting off on wiping their asses. Yeah, I'm picturing, like, wiping a bear's ass, and I, it's like... Dingleberries. It, yeah, it can't... It's, it's, you're not getting it out of there. Like, yeah. the bear would be great for, like, a bidet advertisement. Yeah. But well, toilet paper? Nah. Again, Millennials. Stop spending it on avocado toast and start spending it on bidets. We, yeah. We, bidets are a, so cheap right now. Like You can get a really basic one for like 40 bucks. As a generation, it is time for us to change. Make a step in the in right 2019, direction. In 2019, we're cleaning our ass with water. Yeah. It's the cleanest. You could be the, It's the cleanest possible solution. You use a lot less toilet paper. Yeah. One just, wipe. Yeah. Get the, get the water off. And uh, it's time to change. Yeah. Be the change you want to see in the future, which is clean assholes all around. Yeah. And uh, I'm, we're telling you, uh, this isn't a bit. Get a bidet. It's fucking great. Yeah. yeah. I can't recommend it enough. No. It even it makes shitting exhilarating. <laughs> uh, man driving wrong way on I-70 told police it was faster. It's the same logic I have, like, playing GTA. I'm like, if I, if I stay on the correct side of the road, I got to dodge him this way. If I go on the other side... They for, dodge me. Yeah, they dodge me. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone got out of my way. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, speaking of drivers, driver who swerved to avoid an octopus was actually high. Nobody you, else saw you the don't octopus? say. <laughs> Where was this at? Was it even next to uh, no, the this, ocean? This was inland in the UK. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I was, I'm only swerving because like all the octopus and all the fish they're in the way. I didn't want to hit them. And they're like, sir, are you high? And he's like, no. And then they tested his his blood, and he had like every fucking drug imaginable. <laughs> like, oh yeah. They fucking go hard over there. Yeah. Was he driving a yellow submarine? <laughs> he might have thought he was. The blue meanies are after me. You don't understand, <laughs> officer. 
Ah. Uh, Speaking of drugs. Dutch officials launch perfume that smells like MDMA. The logic here makes sense up to a point. Does it? Does MDMA have a smell? Well, MDMA production has a smell. Oh. So they're they're giving away this perfume that smells like MDMA, which I can't imagine is a pleasant smell to have. I've in your heard body. it tastes very bitter. Yeah. Um, so they they're doing this so more people know to recognize the smell of MDMA production, so more people can. Like if they're walking through their neighborhood, they'll be able to know if there's like a lab so they somewhere can get nearby. Some? <laughs> that or <laughs> or report it to the police. Well, what, but then the, so the police are going to get a bunch of false claims because everyone's wearing this perfume. Yeah, exactly. They're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna spread this perfume all over the country so everyone knows the smell. I'm like, what? How are you not seeing the holes in your logic here? Yeah. Instead, if it's everywhere, people are gonna they're not gonna they're gonna think everywhere is a fucking MDMA plant. Yeah. God damn it! Come on, Holland. Uh, but yeah, realistically, everyone's just gonna look like Bugs Bunny when he floats through the air following the scent cloud, and uh, then everyone's gonna be a lot happier. Mm. Could it be a drug lab? Nope. <laughs> just a bro who didn't take a shower. Mm -hmm. Sasha Baron Cohen claims Borok character is responsible for Pamela Anderson and Kid Rock's divorce. And how is this? Well, they were married briefly like, I know, I know. around the time the movie came out. Oh. And they, uh, there was a screening, like the studio had a private screening. Pam Anderson and Kid Rock, they came, and uh, apparently Kid Rock did not like the movie. <laughs> like, it paints America in a very poor light. Yeah, I, I, that's probably why. It didn't elaborate on it, but yeah, Cohen, he was in an interview, and he said said he like texted uh, Pam Anderson after the movie came out, yeah. or after they had seen it, and he's like, hey, uh, how, did, how did Kid Rock like the movie? And, he's like, and she just replied, just like, we're getting a divorce. <laughs> So uh, they they both split off into opposite ends of the political spectrum. Yeah, now she's with Julian Assange. Yeah, or I at think. the very least, like really enjoys him as a person. Yeah, uh, and Kid Rock, as we all know, uh, will do anything to host a parade. You just give this man a parade. <laughs> Maybe he'll be at the Straight Pride Parade. You know, if if the Straight Pride Parade is a Kid Rock parade. I mean, where's the harm? The man, give him a parade. <laughs> he just wants to host a parade. Uh, yeah, Anyways, one last bit of news yeah. that I don't know how to really categorize in this show. But basically, an old lady went hiking in Arizona this week and she ran into some trouble. It happens. It's getting real hot out. She needed to be rescued. And because of where she was and how remote it was, she had to be airlifted out of there to the hospital by a helicopter. Mm -hmm. The way they do this, a lot of times they'll have the paramedics on the ground. They'll strap you into a stretcher sort of thing and attach that to some cables coming down from the helicopter and uh, they'll, they'll carry you where you need to go that way. Or just lift you up into it. Which is already like pretty scary. Like yes. you're, you're basically like but ziplining from a helicopter. Less scary than being in the situation that you were in moments prior. Yeah, yeah, so there's supposed to be two cords here which is supposed to stop it from spinning. Yeah, someone either one of those, onto it or yeah. it's yeah, attached. One of those cords is not going to attach, and that's why this lady spun around something like 180 times. It was and, uh, nauseating. And according to her, uh, she thought she was going to die. She had to do breathing exercises to stay awake. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't believe she stayed awake. Because I was like, I would have been passed out by like 30 seconds, uh, <laughs> and then I wouldn't have remembered it anyway. Yeah, I would. Uh, the G-forces would have made me pass the fuck out. Yeah. There's no way. I'm the real danger would be choking on your own puke after that. I feel like it would get sucked out. The centrifugal be, force. You, you'd also probably be like an inch taller by the end of it. Actually, I don't know, because the way it spins, it would be pushing G-forces against you, I would imagine. The G-forces pull out. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. okay. I believe. Well, you'll let us know in the comments because we're filled yeah. with scientists in there. Anyway, yeah, this was the funniest thing I've seen all year. It was hilarious because she didn't die and it just looks so <laughs> fucking ridiculous, but it's also just the most terrifying looking thing if you were... Yeah. Happened to be... Uh, you, you hate to see it, but you love to see it. Because yeah. it's not you, and no one got that hurt, and uh, wow, boy, th things can really go wrong with helicopter rescues. Yeah. I wish uh, th that YouTube wasn't so strict on copyright protections so that we could put, like, take this footage and replace it with some footage from an old Bob Saget episode of America's Funniest Home Videos yeah. where the crowd's just fucking <laughs> loving it. <laughs> <laughs> just And they're just cracking jokes and they're just like yeah. howling laughing. Doing at this voices. Point. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. We'll have to talk to Jeremy Hache about creating that.
<laughs> the oh, o- shit show. Is, is the oh shit show still up? I think it's deleted. That, anyway, that had to have gotten erased in one of the many uh, content purges on this yeah. website. Anyways, uh, check out our other shows from this week. We have a brand new episode of News Dump where we talk about the fact that Russia does not enjoy the HBO show Chernobyl. No, and, yet. And uh, a certain weatherman does not enjoy the fact that his station is run by Sinclair Broadcast Group. Yeah. And uh, also an episode about uh, all the details from Google Stadia. 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 Uh, so check those out, or uh, if you want, if you're feeling generous, head to the Patreon or uh, join the YouTube channel membership thing here and support the show. We will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Yes. Goodbye. Bye-bye.